In our previous video, we've looked at the basics of greatsword play, and this time, we'll show you how to go even further beyond and take your understanding of this weapon to the next level. Let's get right into it. In the beginner's guide, we've mentioned that you can guard even if your weapon is sheathed, but did you know that this is actually the quickest and best way to unsheathe in most situations? Let's look at some cool things you can do with this seemingly useless move. The first of these techniques that's very prominent in speedruns is called guard rolling. Blocking with our weapon sheathed will instantly draw our sword and put us into guard state, which we can straight up cancel on the first frame by rolling, allowing us to unsheathe and roll at the same time. The most consistent way to execute this trick is to hold the guard button while running or sprinting, and then press the dodge button as soon as you can while still holding guard. When performed frame perfectly, it will look as if your sword teleports into your hunter's hands while rolling. It takes a while to get this into your muscle memory and become consistent with it, but it's 100% worth it. Unlike the draw attack, guard rolling allows us to instantly unsheathe our weapon without requiring us to stop moving, so it comes in really handy for situations where we need to close distance to the monster before attacking. We can also follow it up with a tackle and a strong charge slash, two tackles in a TCS, or any silkbind move. Guard roll paired with Adamant Slash lets us cover huge distances. Remember, we can use Adamant Slash in any direction, which opens up a lot of opportunities for creative plays. Guard rolling is one of the fastest ways to go from sheath state into a tackle or Adamant Slash. However, if you're not that far away from the monster and you just need emergency hyper armor to tank a roar or attack, we have some better options. The fastest way to get into a tackle from sheath state is to guard, kick, and tackle. And if you want to quickly go into Adamant Slash from sheathed, then your best option is to simply guard and press L2 and triangle while still holding the guard button. Unlike the roll, Silk Binds can't cancel guard on the first frame, but as you can see from our test results, it's still faster than the alternatives. In fact, this is overall the quickest way to go from sheathed state into hyper armor. Be aware that Adamant Slash will move you quite a bit which might cause you to miss the monster's weak spot, so use the kick into tackle option instead if you're already close to them. Monster knowledge is by far the most important part of Greatsword and high level Monster Hunter play in general. Every monster has different attacks and patterns, so there is no universal best combo that will work for every situation. We can, however, give you guys a universal template on how to fight monsters with this weapon. As we said in the beginner's guide, we normally want to have our weapon sheathed and react to what the monster is doing. We can divide each monster attack animation into three distinct parts, the wind-up, active hitbox, and ending. The wind-up usually doesn't have a hitbox, and it serves as a good indicator of what move the monster is doing. Learning to identify the attacks early in their animation is key, and it's something you'll learn as you fight the monster. After the windup, the monster will do their actual attack, which has one or more active hitboxes. Depending on the attack in the situation, we either want to avoid the hitbox by iframing or running away, or tank it with our hyper armor moves. After the active hitbox phase is over, we can usually safely punish the monster until their next attack begins. Our objective is to fit in as much damage as we can during this window. It's important to land your final hit before they start their next attack, or you'll probably miss and get hit. Monsters can also have attack patterns, which means they'll do predetermined attacks in a sequence. Some of these patterns can be position dependent, so to bait out a certain attack, we'll have to stand in a specific location relative to the monster. It's worth mentioning that attack patterns also depend on the state the monster is in, such as their aura level if they have one, and whether they are enraged. Monsters that are flashed or tethered after a wyvern ride as well as those that are targeting small monsters will do shorter combos, so don't be surprised when they are behaving unusually. A slow weapon like Greatsword can massively benefit from attack patterns. Knowing in advance what the monster is going to do gives us a lot of time to prepare a satisfying TCS or Rage Slash punish. After landing an attack on an opening, the monster will either flinch or not. If they flinch, you can either go back to sheath state or chase after them to land another attack. However, if the monster doesn't flinch, they'll start their next move. This is where all that monster knowledge comes in. Hold your position and pay attention to the windup of their next attack. If the move they're doing is punishable from your position, you can continue attacking. 
If it's not punishable, you should dodge or hyper armor the incoming attack and sheathe your weapon, preferably using power sheath to refresh your damage buff. This is a general cycle of greatsword gameplay. Whether you want to avoid or tank monster attacks and what moves you use to punish them all depends on what monster move you're dealing with, as well as your own situation. For example, your current health, position, and equipped switch skills. If you're using Rage Slash, you want to tank certain attacks that you'd otherwise dodge with TCS. It's all about reading the situation and selecting the best course of action. Topples are some of the biggest openings in Monster Hunter. After dealing a certain amount of damage to one or more parts of the monster, they will fall over and stay on the ground, unable to attack. This gives us an opportunity to unleash our highest DPS combos. On a toppled monster, we should always try to land at least a level 3 empowered TCS and as many other charged attacks as we can fit in for the TCS. Each type of monster has a different topple duration, so we'll have to adapt our combo depending on the monster we're fighting. While lying on the ground, monsters will do a certain number of head bobs before standing up to resume their combat behavior. Counting these head bobs in your head is the best way to track the topple's duration and determine which attacks you can do before landing your level 3 TCS. Keep in mind that enraged monsters get a positive and exhausted monsters get a negative speed multiplier. This multiplier will speed up or slow down head bobs. However, the overall duration of the topple will remain the same so there's no need to use different combos for enraged or exhausted monsters. A dunk is a special type of topple, which is an extremely important element of fighting certain flying monsters like Rathalos and Rathian. In the case of these two, bypassing the head threshold normally results in a flinch. However, if they're flying when the damage threshold is met, they will fall to the ground instead and become toppled. This is kind of speedrunning territory now, but you can approximately count how much damage you've dealt to the monster's head. When you've gotten close to the threshold, wait for them to fly, and if you manage to hit their head, they'll fall to the ground and reward you with a massive opening. If you're interested in trying this out yourself, you can look up each monster's part thresholds on a website like Kuranico. Every monster part has a base threshold value, which is then affected by a multiplier that depends on the quest and the number of players. Stuns look similar to topples, but there are a few key differences. Stuns can only be triggered by doing enough KO damage to the monster's head, after which they'll fall over with stars over their head. Stuns generally last longer than topples. In fact, most monsters stay down long enough for us to easily land two true charge slashes on them. Some bosses will also do a stretching animation after getting up from a KO, which gives us even more time to do damage. Be careful during this animation, however, as monsters will raise their head at the beginning of it which can cause you to miss. Try to time your TCS so that it connects when the head is coming back down. An important thing to note about statuses such as KO is that they can override topples. If you know that a monster is close to getting KO'd and you topple them, avoid tackling their head as the stun will override the topple and rob you of that massive opening. In cases like this, use an uncharged adamant slash instead of tackle to shortcut into TCS. Getting the empowered TCS on a topple or stun can be tricky on some monster types, for example flying wyverns. These monsters will flap their legs and wings around while on the ground, which can prevent us from touching the weak spot with the first hit of our TCS, causing us to miss out on a lot of damage. For these monsters, try to position yourself near the top of the head. This way, their legs and wings won't be in the way. If your position isn't good, you can still salvage a situation by timing your TCS so that the first hit lands as the monster's wing is moving out of the way. Wyvern rides can be triggered by doing a certain amount of damage to the monster with aerial and silkbind attacks. After doing enough damage, the monster will enter a rideable state, which gives us an opportunity to sharpen if necessary and line up that level 3 TCS. Make sure to stand about a roll's distance away so that only your second hit connects with the monster. After riding and slamming the monster, they will topple and become tethered for a while. The topple's duration increases for every wall slam you performed during the wyvern ride. Note that while the monster is tethered, they will be unable to move freely, and their attack patterns will change. When jumping off the monster, you can control which direction you fall by using the left stick. We obviously want to go to whichever side the monster's weak spot will be, and, provided the topple is long enough, perform a TCS shortcut from our aerial attacks. Fun fact, 
we have found a minor bug related to Wyvern riding. After jumping off the monster and performing a plunging thrust into a strong wide slash, the wide slash will inherit the charge level of the attack that you use to ride the monster. This works with every attack that can be influenced by charge levels. Next, we'll talk about statuses. For us, sleep is much better than paralysis because our weapon has the highest motion value, single hit move in the entire game, and sleep lets us double its damage. Greatsword is a raw focused weapon and thus isn't very good at dealing status damage except for KO. For this reason, we have to rely on our buddies to put monsters to sleep for us. Palamutes are better at dealing both damage and status than Palicos. When equipped with the Guarding Parasol, every time you do a charge attack, your Palamute will charge up their own weapon and spin it, hitting a monster with a flurry of fast attacks. This will deal a lot of KO and status provided they're equipped with a blunt status weapon. As for the other gear item, the Flurry Strike or Blitz Scroll are both great options. If you're using Rage Slash against endgame monsters, or just want the extra healing, the Healing Blade Scroll works too. For skills, we recommend taking up Status Up and KO King to improve their support abilities even more, followed by either Affinity or Attack. With two Status Palamutes, it's very easy to get two Sleeps and KOs in a solo hunt. Palicos are only worth taking over a dog if you're using a set that can't get close to 100% affinity. In this case, the Fighter Cat's Rousing Roar ability will be extremely useful. For felines, we recommend using the same skills and weapons as we did for the dogs. The moves are up to your personal preference. Just make sure that your cat doesn't have Flash Bombay, because they'll randomly flash monsters and that's really annoying. Now let's get back to the sleep status. The regular TCS sleep wake up is a lot easier than it was in World as TCS moves us further forward in Rise. Just like with the Wyvern Ride TCS, you want to stay about one roll distance away from the monster to be in the right position. On the other hand, getting an empowered TCS sleep wake up is a lot trickier and is not always possible. If you notice the sleep in time while you're in the middle of attacking, you can tackle and then land the first hit of TCS while the monster is falling asleep, and then get the double damage on your empowered second hit. Alternatively, you can use small monsters to get the empower bonus, but this is of course a lot less reliable. After waking up, some monsters will do a stretching animation like after KO and Paralysis, which lets you get in an extra attack. Also, unless you manage to flinch them, they will roar afterwards, so be ready for that. That's all the advanced greatsword knowledge we had for you guys. We hope that you learned something new. Going into any more detail would require us to look at specific monsters, so do let us know in the comments if you're interested in those type of videos. We have way more greatsword guides planned, so feel free to subscribe if you're interested. See you all in the next one, and until then, happy hunting!